Hello, this is Judith St. Clair. Today we're going to talk about weaving sticky yarn. I'm going to show you an old video that I made when I first learned how to weave so I wouldn't forget the steps involved. And we'll go through the steps and then we'll change those steps when we start weaving sticky yarn. The first thing you do is raise the shaft or shafts depending on the pattern that you're using and then you throw the shuttle then you make a wedge of the new weft between the two warp layers then you close the warp and then you tug gently on the shuttle to make sure you don't have any loops in there that are cause knots or problems and then what do you do? You just beat it and you give an extra tap with the beater to set the weft. So as you watch her do this, you've raised the warp, throw the shuttle, make the weft wedge between the layers of warp, close the warp, tug gently on the weft, beat, tap a second beat. Sometimes you don't need this, but a lot of times you do when you're setting cotton or something that doesn't want to weave nicely. And that way you get enough uh, weft inside to go up and down around the warp. You know, it doesn't just go in in a straight line, it weaves. And so we want to leave plenty of warp or weft inside, but not too much. Okay? So that's the way we usually do things. But now when we're weaving sticky warp, we're going to change everything. The sticky warp is um, on the loom right now. It's alpaca. A 216 is the size of the yarn. It's very small and very sticky. And sticky is when you raise one shaft and the other shaft wants to come along with it because the yarn's all stuck together. So you have to deal with how to make it so it will actually weave and you could get a weft between those sticky uh, layers of warp. That's the whole thing. Okay, so now uh, we're having a little demonstration of the yarn itself and it, it's not real strong, it's fuzzy, and you have to be careful how you weave it. You can't treat it roughly or you'll have broken warp all over the place. The weft is a merino, jagger spun merino wool and it is 218 is the size. It's approximately the same size as the 216. There's not a whole lot of difference at that. They're all small, right? So what you do uh, with that you have to be careful because the jagger spun merino wool see it's stretchy and so you don't want to pull it tight through the warp or it will draw in and uh, you have to leave plenty to weave in there so it can can actually weave around the the warp so that's our our challenge today we're going to pull up our bench, sit down, kick off our slippers because weaving barefoot or stocking feet is the only way to go. And we're going to try this out. Now remember when you lift the shaft it's it's going to want to stick to the other ones no matter if the threads are, are separated. That stickiness just wants to keep them together. So you can feel it. If you go inside there and you can feel, see how thin that is? You can see right through it. That's one out of four that's up and the other three are down. One thing before we begin, when you open the shed you can see the floating selvage. Now the floating selvage is going to be a weak thread too because it's the alpaca. So it's good to reinforce the floating selvage with a, um, a a strand of sewing thread and then you can hang it off the the back with the 
in a container uh, right alongside the, the alpaca uh, floating salvage. Now we open the shed and throw the shuttle and then we lift it and we keep the weft snuggled up underneath the upper layer of warp. We do not close this uh, shed and then we, we carefully hold it just loosely and bring down the beater bar and snuggle it right up to the next line in there that's already been woven. But we want to keep that distance because we don't want to drag that weft through all those snaggles underneath here. So you see, now hold it, see how there's no tension on uh, the weft and just bring it down. It's called smushing, I think. <laughs> So bring it up again, smoosh it down. It's hard to learn to do fast, but eventually it goes faster than that. There we go. See how we do? Okay. We'll let her keep weaving there and we can watch how it's done. That little blue dot on top of the beater bar, that's the exact center. And I taped a, a um, silver dollar to that and I remind myself to reach for the center. I keep telling myself, reach for the money. <laughs> But this is a wiggly old beater bar, so I have to do it right in the center. It's always a good practice. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your watching the videos. I hope you learned something. I sure have. I learn every time I do a video, I learn something more. Thanks to my sister, Ruthie, for helping me learn how to weave and patience when I said I really cannot do that which I said about this project I said no there's no way I can do this and I just uh, kept at it learned how to do it and it works fine I wouldn't do this kind of sticky yarn any other way so try it just try it give it some some time it'll be slow at first uh, but you'll do it. You'll catch on. Heck, if I can do it, you can. <laughs> anyway, see you next time. Let me know. Leave me a note if uh, you have a question, and I'll try and answer it. If I can't answer it, I'll send it to my sister. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Bye.